Hello and welcome to Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Shifarao Lakom. The Ethiopian State of Emergency Fact Check disclosed that a picture shared on social media claiming to show the bodies of victims massacred in Aksum of Tigray region is false. Quote, a picture shared on Facebook claiming to show the bodies of victims massacred in Aksum, Tigray region of Ethiopia is false. A reverse image search on Google reveals that the picture was taken in November 2020 in Nigeria. It said, the photo shows bodies lined up in rows on the ground and a huge crowd of onlookers in the background accompanied by a headline that reads, reports emerging of a horrible massacre in Ethiopian holy city. However, the picture showing the bodies arranged as though in readiness for burial was not taken in the Tigray region of northern Ethiopia as claimed in the post. According to the Star, a fact checker, a reverse image search on Google reveals that the picture was taken in November 2020 in Nigeria after suspected members of the Islamic militant group Boko Haram killed at least 40 rice farmers and fishermen while they were harvesting crops in Borno state. Ethiopia is grappling with fake and distorted news being circulated widely over social and some Western mainstream media outlets regarding the situation in Tigray. Despite attempts by the Ethiopian government, the diaspora, Ethiopian diplomatic channels and various other friends of Ethiopia to clarify the situation, reports on most Western media outlets remain grossly exaggerated and clearly tilted toward the TPLF. Talking to ETV, government officials, politicians and Ethiopianists have denounced such reports calling upon the Western media to separate the truth from fake news deliberately disseminated by TPLF cohorts. Kasa Unchani reports. Spokesperson and Public Diplomacy Director General to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia, Ambassador Dina Mufti Saad, a joint and relentless efforts of the government and members of Ethiopian diaspora have watered down the plans of some countries to intervene in internal affairs in the guise of humanitarian aid to Tigray. In an exclusive interview with ZBC English, Ambassador Dina Mufti Saad, that the Western world and some international organizations are now having a clear picture about the current situation in the Tigray region of Ethiopia, but the government has already provided unhindered media and humanitarian access to foreign aid groups and international news agencies. Uh, Ethiopia has been maintaining uh, operations aimed at uh, um, making sure that law is observed in the northern part of the country. That was purely an internal affairs, and an internal matter of Ethiopia. Uh, however, there are concerns that are being sprung from different corners about it. Particularly now, the um, maintaining law and order has been effectively undertaken. And now it's time for uh, reconstructions, rehabilitations, and confidence building in that part of Ethiopia. Uh, friends are coming out to help. And uh, there are others also who are, who are expressing their concerns and who are asking for the opening up. And now to get the support of the international community, Tigray is open. Anyone can travel there only by notifying Ministry of Peace. And uh, media, international media, has been allowed to be there without any authorizations, only through notifications. Uh, government is impressing on the rest of the world to step up their assistance. In a condemned false propaganda by anti-peace elements, the United States and some Western countries, which he said were all driven by the desire to meddle in Ethiopia's internal affairs. He thanked the Ethiopian diaspora for taking the initiative to clear fake information via staging well coordinated rallies. <laughs> Demonstrations are the culminations of the awakening of the Ethiopians living abroad. And uh, it shows also that they are expressing their concern about 
the dignity, integrity, and sovereignty of their uh, country of origin. Uh, it's also uh, a testimony to the awareness of the Ethiopians residing abroad about the imbalances that they see wherever they live, especially in Europe and North America, the wrong views about Ethiopia. And uh, uh, huge demonstrations have been um, noticed recently, particularly in the United States and various cities of Europe, in Canada as well. And uh, these Ethiopians have expressed their sentiments, what they have seen, the anomalies that they, ha they have seen. And uh, I hope this will help, will enable uh, politicians residing in this part of the world to clearly see what Ethiopia is all about. Musa Adam, a politician on his part, emphasized the uh, Tigray People's Liberation Front. TPLF is a master of lies and fraudulence through disseminating fake news to the rest of the world concerning the government's law enforcement and survival of revolution. But we don't need, and of course we will never allow, misrepresentation disinformation of Ethiopia's picture. I personally call upon the global citizens and international media, especially the fake news that they are distributing between and among the global citizens. Of course we have some, as a country we have a diplomatic failurity in very many cases. We failed we really failed to generate, to produce the needed diplomatic missions in very important areas, including the UN and the European Union, the US and other uh, superpower areas. We need to convince the TPL is a crafty engineer of disinformation and fake news with experience since its inception in 1974. The Tigray Liberation Front, TPLF, and predecessor of the TPLF share the same values of Tigrayan hegemony over Ethiopia. Some Ethiopians likewise called upon the United States and the United Nations Security Council and the European Union to see the TPLF for what it really is rather than playing into its hands. The Ethiopian government is not the reason for what happened uh, in Ethiopia at the moment. It is the Tigray People's Liberation Front that created this problem. They did start the war. They thought they were going to win, but they lost in the battlefield. Now, what do they do? They, ha they ha have made the whole world with the media with the cyber warfare. The Ethiopian Broadcasting Authority has vowed to take legal actions against foreign media that are distributing misinformation and unbalanced reporting, thereby meddling in the national sovereignty and unity. Authorities Deputy Director General Wondos and Andualam said some media are mishandling the situation in Tigray in partial, unbalanced and in accurate manner. Help Tom Washtagli brings us up to speed. A long investigation has uncovered detailed evidence uh, of the massacre of dozens of civilians. Uh, in Some the media region which have been given unfettered access to the Tigray region are disseminating doctored documentaries, meddling with sovereignty and, and unity of the nation and, and serving interests as others. And Reports of some international media regarding the situation in Tigray are remorseful and questionable in light of ethics and principles of journalism. In a U.S. statement, the Ethiopian government has said that it is fully committed to undertaking a thorough investigation of the alleged abuse. Abuses, but Deputy Director General it, it, it of the Ethiopian Broadcasting Authority, Wendo Senandualem, said that concrete evidences show that some journalists who were distributing misinformation about Tigray have been found to be in alliance with the expelled TPLF mafia clique and its leaders. They tried to rape me and I was thrown to the ground. Then one of the soldiers fired bullets to scare me. The Eritrean forces called reinforcement and then proceeded to shoot wantonly at civilians on the streets using sniper rifles and machine guns. 
He said the authority has so far issued warning letters against some media that distributed unbalanced and extraneous news and related outputs thereby jeopardized well-being of the country and drummed out some journalists who did so reaffirming readiness to take the same measures on those on, on the same boat. In a latest statement, the Ethiopian Ministry of Foreign Affairs said overblowing things out of proportion will not serve justice. I was at the farm where I worked when I started seeing people running. I didn't know what was going on, and when I went to see, there were soldiers shooting at them. Well, the Red Cross says the capital of Ethiopia's northern Tigray region is struggling with shortages of food and medical supplies. It said to the Western governments and their media outlets that the Ethiopian government has made its position unequivocally clear on the need for through investigation in collaboration with regional and international partners. The media, the Ethiopian government said, have only been unnecessarily politicizing the issue. Now, experts suggest the need to nurture inclusive dialogue and intensify national unity to successfully deter unwarranted external intervention in Ethiopia's internal affairs. Alula Teklamaran presents the full story as follows. University professors approached by the Ethiopian news agency said inclusive dialogue is a way forward to brace national unity and help repel external interventions in the country's internal affairs. What Ethiopia has been conducting in its northern parties and in internal law enforcement operation, the professor said. Adding this does not even deserve to be a global issue. The global powers, they recalled, have a track record of uninvited and undue intervention, citing the cases of Syria, Yemen and Iraq, among others. This is Ethiopia's internal affairs, which can domestically be handled without the involvement of foreign powers. What has been conducted in Tigray is just a law enforcement operation. Of course, it doesn't deserve to be an agenda in the UN Security Council. We all know what the Western world did to countries like Libya, Yemen, Syria and Iraq. All of these interventions wreaked havoc in these nations. Ethiopia's case is not different. We don't need any external meddling in our affair. The experts recommend inclusive dialogue to ward off external intrusion in the country's domestic affairs. <laughs> If we Ethiopians maintain unity, we can resist external pressure from any of the powers high up in the global institutions. But we need to discharge our responsibilities first to make that happen. We should address our economic and political challenges in an inclusive dialogue and ensure solid strategies. Uh, Pressuring to poke their nose in Tigray while the operation has already been finalized is only a recipe for disaster. To make matters worse, some Western media outlets are campaigning for this unprovoked intervention in a strictly domestic affairs to happen. It is to be recalled that Russia, China and India sided with Ethiopia, opposing external interventions. Ethiopia's Attorney General has filed charges against former Communication Department head of the Ethiopian National Defense Force, Major General Gabra Madihin Fakada and others. The suspects, including Major General Gabra Madihin Fakada, have been arrested for allegedly cutting off radio communication lines ahead of TPLA attack against Northern Command of the Army. The Attorney General filed the charges at Federal Supreme Court First Anti-Terrorism and Constitution Affairs Bench. The suspects were arrested on December 3, 2020, in connection with the disruption of the radio communication lines of the Army. The Committee of Ministers of the National Emergency Coordination Center held its weekly regular meeting and reviewed performance reports on emergency humanitarian assistance and rehabilitation activities underway in the state of Tigray. According to the report presented on the meeting, social service provi providing institutions are returning to service at a high rate and 1,000 students sat for the 
12th grade Ethiopian High School Leaving Certificate Examination at various universities in the state of Tigray. Preparations to restart schools in the region have been completed and it's been decided that schools to start operating very soon as extensive discussions have been underway with teachers and parents about the school commencement process. In the meantime, provision of psychosocial support to parents and teachers continues while materials needed to reopen schools have been distributed to schools in the region. The report indicates that 75% of hospitals in Tigray region are now operational, while 10% are operating partially. The rest are carrying out maintenance work to continue to provide services. It is stated on the report, more than 90% of healthcare workers are on board. Now, health professionals who received the first COVID vaccine in Ethiopia urge the public to go forward and take the vac uh, vaccination, casting away any doubt or fear. The COVID-19 vaccine has already been launched throughout the country and is being given to health professionals. Koshumal presents the story as follows. Health professionals who received the first COVID-19 vaccine in Ethiopia warned that the public should stand guard against rumors and misleading propaganda against the vaccine. The professionals disclosed that lots of people have chosen to stay away from the vaccine as a result of these rumors. Health professionals advised the community to take the vaccination, adding that there is no risk in doing so. Jesus Chernet, one such health professional who took the vaccine, said the vaccination is similar to other vaccines, except that few people vomit and may develop fever after vaccination. Any drug has its own adverse effect. That is true to even the food we consume. Some people vomit after taking the vaccine, while others may feel fever or nausea. Otherwise, there is nothing to fear. Considering the vulnerability of the health professionals to the pandemic, the vaccine, they said, is an opportune moment to rectify the situation. Misinformation about the COVID vaccine remains unfounded in that nothing, except increasing vulnerability of the people, they added. As a health professional, I believe that any vaccine may have side effects. People feel the adverse effects of any vaccines. For example, I received the vaccine, but it doesn't have any symptoms. It is to be recalled that Ethiopia has received 2.2 million doses of COVAX COVID-19 vaccine and aims to vaccinate 20% of the population by the end of 2021. Now, finally, before we go, let me remind you of the top stories. Combating fake news by some Western media said to be the clarion call of the time. And Ethiopia warns foreign media of meddling in national sovereignty and unity. That's all the news there is for now. Many thanks for watching us. Stay safe. Take care.